There's now growing evidence that virtual reality can have a significant effect upon people's perception of pain. We know that pain is a psychologically mediated problem involving complex neurophysiology. There's been a number of clinical studies using virtual reality published over the last few years, and many of these are focused on pain research applications. So what is virtual reality? Virtual reality offers us a way to place ourselves in an alternative environment. It's a growing field defined by both its technology and its effects. The technology has been around since the 1980s and slightly earlier, but it's only now we have commercially available headsets as a reasonable price and computers powerful enough to support practical applications with VR. VR results in a sense of presence in another world. It offers a powerful form of distraction, far more immersive than other forms of multimedia. This is achieved through the use of computer-generated three-dimensional imagery and spatial audio, so that the imagery appears real with depth and the sound appears to be directional. The user's head and hands can be tracked in VR, so that as you move around the real world, you also appear to do so in the virtual world. The desired effect is to create an immersive experience whereby the user is placed in a simulated environment that looks and feels just like the real world. As VR is computer mediated, we can totally control the experience of the user and what happens within this world. We can tailor VR environments to be specifically targeted at specific things, such as pain research. So one of the main applications for VR um, we considered back in the 90s and obviously is one of the big players now is healthcare. Uh, VR is really useful for all kinds of healthcare, for surgical simulations, for diagnostic purposes, for rehabilitation after stroke, um, but especially we're focused on it as a method for reducing pain, either in the short term for acute pain or in the long term for chronic pain. Chronic pain in Canada costs society more than heart disease, cancer, HIV, AIDS combined. It has a significant impact on society as a whole, but also on the individual who is suffering from chronic pain. The use of virtual reality aims to give an opportunity for an individual with chronic pain to be able to have a technique that they're able to use in their own home to give them some relief. Currently, we're testing the use of virtual reality in patients with chronic pain associated with a cancer diagnosis. Um, and we are finding for some people, it does have an effect, not for all. But with chronic pain, um, it's often that you have to seek and try many different modalities before you find something that benefits you. And the best approach to chronic pain is a multimodal approach, which means that you use medication, relaxation, many different modalities to manage your chronic pain and each individual will find what is best for them. What we have found with virtual reality is that it is more effective than just a distraction. It seems to be more deep than that and we think probably what's happening is that when people are in the virtual reality they are almost retraining their nervous system not to respond with pain messages. We know that the nervous system is what we would essentially describe as plastic in that it's malleable and we can manipulate the nervous system, particularly the pain management aspect of the nervous system, to respond in a different way. When somebody has chronic pain and they also have neuropathic pain, this essentially means that their nervous system is misfiring and by using the virtual reality we can retrain the nervous system to send messages that are positive and they're not of a painful nature. So there's lots of excitement about VR and that's a great thing. But one of the things that we're really concerned about and one of the reasons we're doing this research is that there's a notion among lots of people that you can just buy an off-the-shelf VR headset like this one um, and download a VR game or environment from online sources and you magically have pain distraction or pain relief in some way. But that's not really true. Um, the evidence from our studies strongly suggests that 
people who suffer for, from short-term and long-term chronic pain have specific needs and certain sensitivities. And if we don't design the whole VR system in the right way, it really doesn't help. So care needs to be taken, for example, with the hardware, with the software, and with the content or what patients see and interact with. For some individuals who've experienced the virtual reality, it hasn't helped them at all, and that is to be expected. For others, it's helped them enormously. And for one, I, one um, individual I remember, and she told me that for the first time in many, many years during the time she was in the virtual reality, she didn't have any pain at all. That was remarkable for her to actually have no pain. And what we have to do is think of the impact of the individual. If you've had pain for years and years from the moment you wake up to the moment that you go to bed, and then suddenly you are immersed in an environment and your pain goes, that is significant. And it gives the individual a break from the exhaustion and the, um, the stress of the pain. If we can give them that break, we think maybe also that after a while we can start training the nervous system to respond in a more positive way. We are actively looking for participants for our work, so please do get in touch if you'd like more information or are interested in participating.